chosen people would be? The chosen people? Yes, the Jews. Right. Which come out of whose seat? Isaac. Oh, okay, good. Very good. Yeshaya, Ban Ban Yam Yen Ban Yeshaya, Ban Ban Yam Yen Ban Yeshaya. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai Barakatah. Yahweh Bun bun yum yum bun yum yum I Alright, this is the uh Bar Mitzvah type of ceremony that we're having here for these two young men here who are coming of age. Alright, the coming of age meaning they're turning to that manhood stage, 12, 13 years of age, around that time. So when you read the scriptures, it teaches you that, uh, that when a man comes of age around that, that time of his age, he, he's turning into a man, or turning into manhood. So, uh, tradition in Israel that we have some kind of ceremony, right? Bar Mitzvah type of ceremony. So, just to recognize when these men are coming of age, we do this type of ceremony. And um, these two young men, are, uh, they've been around in Israel for a while, right? When they were young men. And most I will, these young men continue in the spirit and truth and uh, of the most High, learning the scriptures, learning the Hebrew, learning about Israel, learning their history, and uh, being the type of men, the tro troopers of the most High, all right? Soldiers of the most High. that's what we want the young men to do coming in Israel. But we want to be able to continue this as more young men come in. So when these young brothers come in from out of the world, and they're, uh, you know, 11, 12, 13 years old, when they come of age, we want to be able to do this. So we want to recognize our own. When we, you know, Israel got to start recognizing the Most High's commandments and our own. We don't need Esau to recognize us. We can re recognize our own people and begin to have uh, these type of ceremonies for our own people. Right? So we want to do this in the spirit of Most High and the Shai. So that's, that's why we're here. That's why. We, uh, we scheduled this celebration tonight for these young men. Um, so what they're going to do, right, Kodagar, they're, they're going to read the Hebrew and the Hebrew and the Ten Commandments and the Lord's Prayer. Okay? And just so, because we want all the young men to be able to do this. Okay? My sons, my sons, they did it when they turned of age too. They had to read the Hebrew, the Ten Commandments, right? Lord's Prayer, and they got to be able to do this. Okay. Look, uh, Samuel, how old was Samuel when the Most High came? He was young. Understand? So, um, and these were, uh, in, in the Most High's uh, work, the men, when they become priests, they're young men. You see what I'm saying? They're real young men. We had kings that were like eight years old when they started. So these young men got to start young. So that's why the most I say, train a child in the way that he shall go. They shall go. You got to start them young, man. 
You can't wait till they get this age to start teaching them Hebrew. You gotta start when they, uh, you know, the, uh, the baby's age, right? Mm -hmm. A young child. So that's what we gotta start doing. All right. So they you wanna start them now? Yeah. Let me say one okay. other thing. Um, um, we call it the Bun Matizawa, mm -hmm. and in Hebrew, Bun Matizawa meaning son of the commandment. Right. See these ten commandments here. I Shua Matazawa, ten Matazawa, meaning commandments. So a bun Matazawa is a son of a command. So when they come of age, now they're being responsible for these commandments here. Because the Most High, He's raising up a nation of priests. And a priest is supposed to conduct the service of the Most High. And to conduct the service of the Most High, you have to know the Hebrew. Because when you say the prayers in Hebrew, it's more powerful than when you read it in any other language. So part of the, the Bon Matizawa is for them to understand the Hebrew, how to read it, how to write it, and how to basically yeah, teach it as a class. So, you know, they're now starting off. So we're going to start with um, the young brother, Tawabula. He's going to read his Hebrew alphabet. And he's going to do the Lord's Prayer in Hebrew. Son, you can all right. Now you're gonna do the Lord's yeah. prayer in Hebrew. Next we're gonna have Brother Thumbyam Dabar. He's gonna do the Lord's Prayer in Hebrew and the Ten Commandments. And any other ones you want to do? Kodashwa, Kabad, Abaka, Ya Abaka, La'a, Thub, Tharata, Thwata Zaka, La'a, Thunha, La'a, Thubna, La'a, Fayna, Shakur, La'a, Thubak, Thakamad, Ho, Ashara, Laraika. Alright, that was very good. You know, the brothers are now learning, and this is the age for them to start learning, to start coming into the covenant, to the priesthood. You know, they're a little rusty, but you know, as time go on, they're gonna continue to learn and better themselves. So by the time they're they're in their late teens, they're 18, instead of running the streets, they'll be up in here running the school. You know. Come on. And that's what the what our nation is all about. Raising up our young men, instead of being criminals and thugs on the street, 
for them to be priests right. and Come ambassadors on. of Yahweh Shah. Come on. Okay. Come on. You have other young men that has passed their bar mitzvah. Yeshaya here. We have the other young brother in the back. Who else we got here? Banja Hawada. Who else? You know, later on we'll have something for them. Come. Yeah, we got him. Th um, Yahuda, Banja What? The Falcon? No, forget my doctor. Yeah. <laughs> you can't give him to a thirty-year-old man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> give it to him twice. But yeah, brother, so, uh, I mean, it's very important, and the Most High is, is showing us that it's high time for us to start teaching the young men and raise them up to be priests, raise them up to be prophets, raise them up to be leaders in Israel, because uh, he says, suffer children to come on there, right? So, it's our job to lead our children into the next phase of this thing. That would be like into the kingdom of heaven. Come. It's our job to lead them, right? And so because they're going to be the ones leading, right? As we get older, they're the ones coming up. And so it's our job to make sure that they're capable of running, like you said, the service, running the camps, running the classes, uh, knowing how to do the high holy days. What else? Okay. Everything that pertains to being an Israelite, right? The young men got to start doing and if we don't prepare them, who's going to do it? Come on. You think about it, who's going to do it? So I got to prepare, understand? So we got to be able to do that. So, I mean, we want to give these brothers a hand. Right, that's beautiful. Now I just want to bring out one scripture, right? Uh, this is uh, in Luke 2 and 40, right? This will show you when Yahweh Shai came to be 12 years old. This is where they get the idea of the Ban uh, Matazawa uh, when Yahweh Shai turned 12. Luke 2 and uh, the 40th verse. Let me just start from there. It says, And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit. See? Talking about Yahweh Shai, who acts strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of the Most High was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. So it was during the Passover they went to the feast, right? Uh, up to the feast. When he was 12 years old, see, when he turned 12, he turned 12 at the Passover. That was Yahweh Shai's birthday, right? They went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. So Yahweh Shai is, his age at 12 years old is like the measure of when he became a man. Understand? That's, that's the measure right there that we go by. So, how old are you, brother? 12, and you're 12 too? Okay, 12 years old. Right. So Yahweh Shai turned 12. And so we go by that. That's the scripture that you go by uh, when you want to bring out about the one month to Zawa. How do we know it's 12? In the East of the world, they say, what, 13? So-called Jews. So they say 13, but the scriptures say 12 here. How about that? You're a man at 12 years of age, right? 12 years of age, you become a man, you see? Now, of course, you're going to need tutors, you're going to need teachers to help you along the way, but still, the eyes of the most side, understand, you're ready to do manly things. See? That's why the scripture says, when I was a child, what is that, man? When I was a child, first Corinthians? Let's read that right quick. So, for you, brother, when I was a child, I spake as a child. See? I did childish things. But now, where, where is it? 13 uh, 11? 10, right. 1311, right? It says, read that, Ben. It says, uh, 
1 Corinthians 13, 11. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, that's now, see? See, when they were children, they thought the children, they spake as children, they did foolish things as children, right? That's why, what does the most I say about a child? Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. See? And that's why you have parents. You have parents to, to beat out the foolishness. Understand? That's why it says, don't spare that rod. Right. They spank them. Because when they become, when they get to 12 years of age, what happens? Go ahead, Ben. But when I became a man, because they're going to become a man, see? And this is the age of, see, in Esau's world, people still think this is still childlike. In Esau's world, they still think they're children. No, you're not, not with the most eyes. You gotta become mature, you gotta think like a man. This is at this age. And then they have the the the, the te so-called teenage years. Well today you can be 18 years old but act like somebody that's you know eight, nine years old. This is what they have out there in the world now. Huh? This is what they have. Yeah. They don't want you to grow up here. No, they don't want you to grow up. See, that's why you got 25 year old kid grows playing video games. Right, exactly. You know what I'm saying? 40 year old. 40, 40 year old playing video games because they don't want you to grow up. And with, and, and with the pants hanging down. Right, the pants hanging down. Because when you grow up and act like a man, you start thinking like a man. Like right. I said, talk right. like That's a right. man. And then a man starts to think about, well, who is my enemy? See? Who is this man is all oppressing me? See, children aren't going to think about that. But a man would. So he wants to keep you thinking like a child. Go ahead, man. I put away childish things. Yeah, so these brothers here got to start putting away childish things. All right. I mean, you know, they have to evolve out of it. Understand? Right now they're probably still playing a few video games, but they got to evolve out of the childishness. Understand? And start putting on the manhood. Go ahead, Ben. And that's it. That's it. See? So this is what the Most High wants to do. And Ben, get uh, Amos two twenty eight. But what does the scripture say? He said, Amos said he's seen young men prophesying and teaching. I say, that's, what, that's what Amos says. So these young men, eventually they're going to start to prophesy and do the things the Most High wanted to do, as the works of the Most High. See? He, he even told Jeremiah. He said, Jeremiah, I have chosen you a prophet unto a nation. Jeremiah said, No, I'm too young for this. He said, Don't tell me you're too young. Right. That's what he said. Don't tell me that. I, you're going to do whatever I tell you to do. See? And then Jeremiah was chosen to be a prophet unto Israel, unto the nations, and everything. And the most I said, I'm going to send you wherever I send you. You got to go and teach. And so Jeremiah had to do it. And read that with me, 228. Is it Joel? Yes, it's Joel. Joel, Joel. sorry. Uh, Joel. Uh, second chapter, 28 verse. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour up my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Yeah, see? Is that it? And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids. In those days will I pour out my spirit. Right. Say the most high is going to pour out his spirit. But he said the young men shall see visions also. Understand? So they're going to have that ability to be able to see visions. Now, you can't look at them when the most high put a spirit on them. You can't say, you're too young. You know what you're talking about. Because the most high said, I'm going to bring this truth to the mouth of babes. Understand? So the most high can come through the spirit of any man when he gets ready. Sometimes you got little babies can tell you. The most high can come through a little baby. And that little baby can say something. You say, where did he get that from? They say, you don't know how the most high can come. So he's dealing with these young men. And so these young men got to prepare themselves in these last days. And so that's why the most I will have it where a lot of people will start to come in. We we in the end here. So the most I gonna bring our people to all different age groups. And we gotta prepare ourselves for the influx 
of probably, what, thousands of people, correct? So we got to get ourselves prepared. Just one more, Ben. <laughs> That's uh, uh, Titus 2 and 6. So I get Titus 2 and 6. Karazali, get 1 Peter 5 and 5. That's it. My brother said I'm explaining that to me in scripture. Uh, the book of Titus, the second chapter, the sixth verse. Young men, likewise, exhort to be sober-minded. See, so it says young men exhort to be sober-minded. See? And so, sober-minded means what? you got to be clear-minded. You can't be out here doing foolish things. It's not just talking about drinking and being drunk and not sober. You can't be doing foolish things out here in the world. Because Satan is like a roaring lion seeking who he may destroy you. He eat you up alive. You do things that are foolish. So, so the young men exhort to be sober-minded. Go ahead, Ben. Is that it? Nice one. Yes. It says, in all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. Right. So this is what these brothers got to do. They got to show thy, themselves. They got to do patterns of good work. See? Okay. And, yeah, go ahead, Ben. Can I say this? Yeah. Even though it's showing them, because remember, they're just in the beginning stage. What right. it's made showing is men that's now ready for the battlefield to go to right. war. Because at the age of 20, right. uh, uh, 21, that's when you're eligible for the battlefield to become a soldier. But this stage here now, they still have to be under tutors. They still gonna have that childish folly in them. That's right. why you have tutors to keep instructing them. But when a man becomes 20, all that foolishness is out the window. Out the window. You are the call talk like, yo, 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 what's up, son? What's up, son? That's out. You understand? I'm a gang bang. That's out. You're supposed to be in the Most High Army. Don't you know it was a Black Panther? At the age of 19, he was a Black Panther making wise decisions. 16. 16, and he was killed at the age of 19. Imagine a young man at the age of 19 with that kind of mindset for the development of his people. And that's what the white man hates. When you have a young man that has a mind of, of, his, of, his, of his elders, that's what the most I said. When you have a son and you teach your son, it grieves the enemy. Understand? Because he's going to be a pattern of you. And that's what we're trying to develop. Young men in that frame of mind. Not out there gang banging, uh, killing their own people, robbing their own people, but being productive amongst their nation. Mm -hmm. right, very good. Is that it, right? Yeah. Okay, and the cross already read five. First, first Peter 5 and 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For the Most High resisted the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. Right, see? So all those are examples of the younger men when they come in from this age, and like you said, all up to 20 years of age. You got to prepare yourself. Submit yourselves unto the elders because they're going to watch out for your souls and then teach you how to become leaders and priests and teach you how to do the service and so forth. But the foolishness and all that stuff got to be eventually evolved themselves out of that madness. Understand in these last days. Because not only, not only them, but even people who are new in the truth, even brothers who are new in the truth, because you're like babes. So you can still be 35, 40, 45 years old, but you're a babe in this truth. And a lot of times people at that age, when they come out the world, they still have foolish tendencies because the world, they teach them foolish things. Where they, where they think it's, it's okay to do it, when you come into the uh, works of the most side, it's not okay. Understand? Uh, you know, OPT and all that, all that type of stuff they do out there in the world. They, that madness they do. Well, that's foolishness. They, but when you come into the, uh, the structure of the most size, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, then you get rid of all that, even though you might be 35, 40, 45 years of age. See? Go ahead, Sir, uh, what was the name of that Black Panther, the one that killed at 19 years old? Bobby Hampton. Oh, oh, Fred Hampton. Fred Hampton. Mm -hmm. you remember that name? 19 years old. Oh, this James one, uh, little Bobby Hutton. And 16. 16, mm -hmm. the Black Panther, wise young man. Growing up with this right. wisdom, 
Young men in the battlefield fighting for the struggle of their people. He right. was a leader. A leader. Fred Hampton. Mm -hmm. Fred Hampton. And he said, I am a revolutionist. And when I leave you, remember, I'm a revolutionist. And Esau killed that young brother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and he, he said, sleep. and he said, if, if you're not about revolutions, forget about my name. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Young yeah. brother, man. <laughs> young man. About 21 years old. Yeah. Yeah. Because back then they were, they had a mature spirit in them. They, they knew they had a common enemy. They knew who their enemy was. Huh. See, and they understood that. Huh. So when, so back then they were they were younger, but they were more mature. Now Esau he knows to take that maturity away. He got to do. Get, feed them foolishness. He feminize them. Yeah, he feminize them and feed them all that madness out there. And so now, now the young men or the older men act like the young men. So they're 30 years old. They want to play, you know, video games and do all the foolishness out there. It's not. It's just not going to work. You, you ain't going to lead no nation like that. See. So when you come in here, all that stuff you got to get rid of. All that madness you got to get rid of. See? All right, we got one more scripture here. Go ahead, Ben, read it. Right, this is in the Apocrypha, Ecclesiastes, the second chapter. My son, if thou come to serve the Most High, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart aright, and constantly endure, and make no haste in the time of trouble. Right. Cleave unto him, and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at the last end. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. Mm -hmm. Right, so it says, prepare thy soul for temptation, my son. See? But that's, that's because why? When you come into the most high's work as a young man, what's happening here now? You're not fighting against flesh and blood anymore, are you? Now you're fighting against the principalities and, and high places and spiritual places. This is what we're really fighting against. And if, it, if these, and they're 12 years old, but now in Satan's eyes, what do they, what, is, what do they mean now? They, that these men are coming up in the most eyes work. They're now, they're now spiritual. Now, the, you know what I'm saying? The most eyes are dealing with their spirit now. They're, of course, their spirit is eternal. Their spirit is from the most eyes. See? So that's what that's what when, when they come to the truth, that's what Satan sees. You see a, a man of the most side. He don't see a young man twelve. He sees a spirit of the most side. See? That's gonna be developed. So that's why Esau tried to get us at our, at the children. He tried to start at the younger age. And like he said, teaching the homosexuality thing at a young age, in the cartoons, understand? Uh, killing one another in the video game, they, they shoot one, you know, shoot one another in the video game, so they start young. And the, and the, and the black woman, she wants an abortion, and it, you know what I'm saying? So getting them before they even come out the womb. Mm -hmm. they, yeah. They're going to make it a curriculum. Yeah. In the yeah. system. Yeah. To teach homosexuality. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. At a very young age. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 It's in the cartoons, it's in everything, in the yeah. newspaper, everything. So. Uh, they, they're trying to endorse it in all 50 states, but this is where it's coming to. That's why I said prepare thy soul temptation. Now Satan, like a roaring lion, is going to seek after these young men. But, remember, the angels are there too. God. See? God. So where you, where you begin to say your prayers and everything, you know Satan senses, you know, demonic forces or principalities around you to try to get you to go off, the angels are there to protect you also. you got to remember that too. See? And that's the battle. It's a spiritual battle. Okay? It's no more carnal battle, but it begins to be spiritual. Even for young men just coming in. Even for the sisters coming in. Okay? Even for all of us that come in this truth. Okay? Because we are the what? The, the Hebrew Israelites, the chosen of the most high. We're going to run this earth next. Understand? Because the upliftment of Israel is the downfall. Of Esau, God, and God, the God, nation. God, God, so that's God. why, that's why we have to uh, raise our children. And that's why they're after us. The president is after you. Barack Obama's after you. The Vatican City's after you. The Pope's of Rome are after you. They're all after us, brother. We're the Israelites. See? We're number one on the list. And Esau got his terrorist hit list. Israelites are number one. 
Israel is number one. That's right. They got a, uh, the every, they got everybody color coded. The Israelites are number one. They got a what a blue, red, and yellow, whatever it is. And they do martial law. Who you think is number one? <laughs> Israel. Understand? So we have to prepare ourselves. See? The only way we can do it, you got to do it in your house shot. You can't do it no other way. You got you to be in the Mashiach Yahusha. You cannot prepare yourself any other kind of way. That's it. It's over. See? I don't care if you're a Black Panther. Back then, okay. But now, it's got to be in your house shot. Right. And you see it didn't work. You saw infiltrated COINTELPRO, Black Panther gone. Yeah. Black Muslim, they infiltrated Farrakhan. He sold out. You know that. Gone. <laughs> see? Understand? And so on and so forth. All those black politicians, gone. They sell us. Gone. Jesse Jackson Jr. got mental illness now. He finished. They put that in. Yeah, they put that in. So, you know what I'm saying? So, there is nothing left but the Mashiach Yahweh Shai. That's the only way to prepare this. That's right. That's right. And so, uh, for these young men, that's what they got to think about. Okay, Grazalo, anything else? Uh, uh, yeah, we're going to have um, their parents say a brief word. Yeah. Um, that that way. That way, Yad? Is that brief for us? Um, well, I'd like to say the water, Yahweh, for, you know, the brothers and sisters coming out. I never thought I'd see this occasion, but like I said, I'm happy, you know, because when you look at the news, you see a lot of so-called black and Hispanics dying in the hands of not only just the police, but also each other. And that's a curse. But when these young brothers are in the truth, I know we could be saved. I know our nation could be a, a further going nation that can go further and further and further with the spirit of truth. Mm. You understand? And it goes for the, the sisters too, the young sisters. But it starts with the young men because they're going to have to teach the young sisters. You know what I'm saying? It's an order. You understand? And Shawab Yulai, when he first came here, it was, a, it was a struggle. You know what I'm saying? But you have to have, be patient with the children because they're not going to get everything all at once. You got to be very patient and, and very diligent to teach. Because we can't look at our, these, these teachers they set up in the school system and think that they're going to teach them something that we can't. And we're supposed to teach them what the Most High tells us to teach them. You understand? Stop making excuses. You understand? We, we know it's hard. We know we're living in hell. Because this ain't our resting place. The ones that's visiting. We Hebrew Israelites, that's our nationality. Hebrew is our language. So when we teach our children this, we're supposed to be grateful and thankful that we are chosen so that way we can teach our children who they are. So I like to say, Dua, proud of you. Yah, proud of you. And keep strong. I want to see y'all, oh, you want to go back in the world because there ain't nothing left. That's right. Like the elder Ben said, I don't see no 10 years left in this wickedness. No. 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 I'm serious. I don't see those 10 years left. If it is 10 years, let it be 10 years of righteousness. But damn it, Yahweh Shai got to get us out of here. So with that, say shalom. 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 His mother is here, Maya Makar. And on. And on. He has a lot of aunts and uncles here today. <laughs> um, so why to everybody for coming out? I know. Ooh, wait. <laughs> this um, is something big for our family, for Thum Yum. Uh -huh. Come. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Take your time. We've been through a lot, and his name fit him. He's an uplift, uplift warrior. And he's been my warrior. He uplifts me every single day. I have a I have a 
have a um, Psalms 91 to read, but I can't read it because I'm a mess right now. <laughs> <laughs> I can't read it. I'll read it. So I just read it for him. Yeah, go read it. Psalms 91. Psalms 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of Almighty. I will say of the Most High, He is my refuge and my fortress. My power in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes thou shalt behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Most High, which is my refuge, even the Most High, my habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shall thou trample on their feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will not answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show my salvation. Amen. <laughs> This, this is my prayer of protection for both of you young men. To stay in the truth and be as diligent as everybody you see in this room. Yeah. Also when the parents uh, speak, they should always speak and, and uh, thank the most high for uplifting that burden. That burden or responsibilities are off them. Mm -hmm. See, so so now the responsibility is on the young men now. Right. See, see, they should thank the most high for uplifting that burden. Right. Right. But but really, the responsibility and the burden is, is not really uplifting. See, mm -hmm. see, because you know, we supposed to have synagogues all over right. the place. Right. They supposed to be in classes seven days a week, learning right. all. So a little of that burden is still upon us yeah. right. as parents and as teachers. Yeah, right. So so each time that, that, that we can uplift these young brothers and teach them something within the law or something within the scriptures, then we do so. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So now um, we're going to do the anointing for them because it's a custom in Israel to anoint men when they come into position. You know, they anoint the priests, they anoint prophets. So now we're going to anoint them with the anointing oil of the Most High. We're going to say the anointing prayer over them. And now, um, you're going to repeat after me. Just put the right hand. Shema Ail, Tham Yam Gabar, Tham Yam Gabar, Barak, Barak, Tham Yam Gabar, Tham Yam Gabar, Gopar, Gopar, Tham Yam Gabar, Tham Yam Gabar, Shema Ail, Tawab Yalad, Barak, Barak, Tawab Yalad, Tawab Yalad, Gopar, Gopar, Tawab Yalad, Tawab Yalad, Mahasham, Mahasham, Yawashai, Yawashai, the water, Amen.
now um, we have certificates made up for them. Young men in here, certificates as they come to an age, and they're gonna go through the same procedure and ceremony. So I'm gonna award this to Kawagilas. Hold it up. And the Ram Yam Gabar. That's his certificate. Hold it up. Yeah. 
Yahweh our power, Yahweh. 